Hey there guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at a mini PC that I managed to snag on AliExpress for $260. And what I'm most excited about is the fact that it is a system with a Ryzen 9 7940HS. So you might be wondering how the hell did I manage to snag a Ryzen 9 mini PC for only $260? Well, this is a bare bones unit, which means that I need to put in the RAM and the storage myself as well as the operating system but even if you were to buy a one terabyte ssd and buy 32 gigabytes to put in there yourself it comes out cheaper than most units that you'll find out there with the ram and storage already included and of course there is the unit right there it should be the gmk tech k6 which i never got around to taking a look at gmk tech has very easily become one of my favorite mini pc companies because while some of their earlier units tended to have issues when it came to cooling they iterated on that so quickly that their current generation of models are really really high end but by the looks of it this is one of their older models so i'm very curious how it's going to do when it comes to cooling the ram specifically i believe it was the k4 that i took a look at before where with having the lid on the ram and ssd were just suffocating to the point where it would legitimately affect the performance performance in games and by popping off the lid and just fanning it myself I was able to smooth out the FPS that we were getting it was because the RAM was overheating so I'm curious if that's going to be the scenario here as well so we do have a 120 watt power adapter here and it is a Mickey Mouse ears plug and of course it is the usual 19 volts that you'll find on most mini PCs as for the rest of the accessories, what is this? I, I don't know what this is, but it came with, with the, the stuff. So we will, of course, get everything we need to vase mount the unit. Get a decently sized HDMI cable. Sometimes they'll include just really small ones, but this is a pretty decent size. And of course, the power plug that we need for the brick itself. As for the mini PC itself, it is very standard to GMK Tech's older designs. And I have taken a look at some units that look like this, so We'll see what the performance is going to be like, but of course we got to pop this thing open and put in some RAM and storage in there. Okay, so I managed to pop open the system. It was really easy. This thing makes it extremely easy to pop open the shroud that's here. You know, this right here comes out very easily with that, but I popped it open. I managed to salvage some RAM and SSDs from other systems. And I also noticed that my audio interface for the microphone that I normally use uh, it's dead, so I just switched over to a lapel microphone. So that's why the audio sounds different. But here you can see the inside of the unit where you can see we have the two DIMM slots and we do have two M.2 slots and it already does have a Wi-Fi card installed. Very nice layout, pretty much exactly what you're looking for when you get a system like this and you're looking to upgrade it. Now I'm going to be putting two SSDs in here. It's nothing remarkable. It's just a 512 gigabyte SSD and a one terabyte SSD. By the way, I picked up this electric screwdriver from AliExpress for like 15 bucks and it's pretty decent, honestly. It, uh, it just makes this stuff a lot easier. It's not the highest quality thing at all, but honestly for 15 bucks, I feel like I'm gonna get my money's worth pretty quickly. So I'm pretty sure the 512 gigabyte one already has Windows installed on it. So I'm gonna have to essentially wipe that. And of course the 512 gigabyte one is going to be the boot drive. All right, now we have everything that we need in there. So we can close it up and we can get this thing hooked up and see what it's like. Now the first game that we're going to be taking a look at is Sniper Elite Resistance. This is a brand new title to come out this year. And here it is running with the lowest in-game graphics settings, but the game does not support any kind of upscaling. There's no FSR, there's no DLSS. This is it just running natively. And it honestly performs really well on many PCs. Sure, visually speaking, it doesn't look incredible, but it doesn't look terrible either. And well, with an FPS average of 76 and 1% lows of 54, this is going to be a very rock solid, very consistent experience. And it's surprising to see for a brand new title that also doesn't have to rely on upscaling to get you a decent experience. In all honesty, I'm just impressed. Now in Marvel Rivals, the performance is kind of questionable. 
We're of course running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR and it's FSR at the quality preset. So there is headroom there if you want to start messing around with it. But this is one of those titles where FSR really becomes very noticeable. Where even at the quality preset, it doesn't exactly look incredible. But I can totally understand that you'd be willing to sacrifice some of that visual quality if it meant having a more consistent gaming experience. Still, this has been a surprisingly heavy title for integrated graphics. I would be curious to see how some of the higher end integrated graphics chips will handle this title, but it seems like the 780M is just getting up there in age at this point, and a title like this is just on the edge of being a very nice playable experience. Now of course I also had to check out Black Myth Wukong, and this is the game running with the lowest in-game graphics settings, and we are using FSR, and that is FSR with a base resolution of 66%. And well, with the built-in benchmark, we get a very nice result here. Very nice, consistent FPS average and 1% low. So even though things weren't incredible, and you can see there are consistent spikes that happen in the frame time charts, it won't really constitute anything that will make it an unplayable experience. And the FPS average is high enough that you could realistically get away with playing the game. Though in the late game, you might run into some issues and that might make it more difficult or impossible for you to play. But I think in the worst case scenarios, you could either get really aggressive with FSR or you could just lower the base resolution and don't rely on any kind of upscaling. Some people tend to prefer the visuals of that. So really, it all just depends on you. Now, of course, I have to take a look at Counter-Strike 2 since it is the most popular game on Steam every single day. And the result here was spectacular. I always test the game with the lowest in-game graphics settings. Of course, we always disable FSR. It just doesn't seem like the type of title where I feel like anyone would realistically use FSR unless they were the most desperate person possible. But getting an FPS average that is in the triple digits and 1% lows that are very high as well with a frame time chart that looks this spectacular this is just a great result the 780m really is still a powerhouse even though it has been around for a little while now with the way that amd does their product stacks the 780m is going to be around for quite a while so it's at least nice to see that one of the most popular games in the world performs this well on it so I also ended up taking a look at Civilization 6 with its turn time test running on here and I did try it with the lowest in-game graphics settings and well that ended up coming out with an average turn time of 28.38 seconds. A pretty great result and one that lines up pretty perfectly with all the other Zen 4 based CPUs that I've taken a look at. And it's definitely a result that you will not be mad at at all and you of course do have the headroom to turn up graphics settings settings and it really won't affect the term times at all. So with a multi-core score in Cinebench of 15,550, the 7840HS in this system is performing around the level that you would expect for its TDP. It still falls behind the best performing 7840HS that I have, but that one of course has a maximum TDP of 60 watts, so it ends up usually performing the best in these CPU tests. But still, this ends up falling well in line with its level of performance in both the multi-core and single core and more importantly it's beating out systems that if you bought as full kits they are more expensive and weaker than this system now, I'm pretty sure I misspoke earlier and I called this the Ryzen 9 7940HS. But of course, as you saw with all the tests, it's the 7840HS. And well, after taking a look at all the numbers, it's a pretty great performer. Overall, it falls in line with what you would expect out of the 7840HS at the TDP that it's set to. That effectively means that at a bare bones price of $268 that I paid, which it should be somewhere around $270 right now. To get it configured the way that I have it here with 32 gigabytes of RAM and if you just want to have the one terabyte SSD, right now on AliExpress you're looking at spending about $405 to $408. That pretty much puts this at roughly $40 to $60 cheaper than any equivalent mini PC with comparable specs as a complete unit. So there are some major savings 
savings to be had if you go down the bare bones route. Because at $405 to $410, its competition is a lot of systems that are rocking either Ryzen 6000 series with comparable amounts of RAM and SSD storage, or you'll see 7000 series mini PCs, but they'll only have 16 gigabytes of RAM and only 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. So the bare bones route is a legitimate way to go if you want to have some savings and especially with how the economy is looking, saving those $60 might just make the difference on whether or not you get enough storage or enough RAM like what you want. So I think if you're really trying to maximize what you're going to get out of your system and you're not afraid of opening it up and putting in, in the parts yourself and of course installing Windows yourself, then this is a great route to go. So I'm going to leave a link down below below to the exact listing that I bought and of course for a kit of 32 gigabytes of RAM linked down below and of course I'll link a one terabyte SSD so you can get this as cheap as possible and I think that if you're really considering picking up a mini PC this is the route to go because look there are going to be listings out there for systems with the 8845 HS or the 8945HS that are going to be a hundred to two hundred some of them even four hundred dollars more expensive than this and those chips are exactly the same as what we have in here there is really no fundamental difference so save yourself the money if you're just trying to maximize what you can get for your dollar this is the route to go but i'll catch you guys in the next one